Good evening. Welcome to our Good Friday worship and meditation service. Tonight, we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Christ has made for all of humanity. We will meditate upon the last seven words spoken by Christ while he was being crucified on the cross. But my message this evening will primarily be focusing on the first two words. And they are, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And truly, I tell you, tonight, today, you will be with me in paradise. Here now, the reading of our passage tonight, taken from Luke chapter 23, verses 32 to 43. Listen to the word of God. The two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his, right, on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And the soldiers cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by and watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, and coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, then save yourself. There was also an inscription over him saying, this is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hung there kept deriding him saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God? Since you are under the same, we are, you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has, not, has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Then Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of the Lord for us this evening. Thanks be to God. For our Good Friday meditation this year, I, like, I would like us to meditate upon the first two words that Jesus spoke while he was being crucified on the cross along with the other two criminals. This was a scene which I'm sure many of us are familiar with whenever, they think, whenever we think of Good Friday. And as we read earlier from the Gospel of Luke chapter 23, Jesus had already been crucified by the Roman soldiers and was hoisted up on the cross. It was just a matter of time until he would take his final breath. The whole process of being crucified and dying on the cross was extremely excruciating and agonizing, as you can imagine. Now, obviously, aside from the Hollywood drama that we often see on the movie scene and on TV, I don't think any one of us have experienced or witnessed such gruesome executions in person. And I hope that we will never have to see that either. There was nothing glamorous about executing a live person on a cross and waiting for him to, to suffer for hours and then eventually die. 
But that's exactly what took place on this day. At this point, there was absolutely nothing anyone could have done to reverse the outcome of this gruesome execution event. All the people, including the women and the disciples, could do was to stand there, to stand by beneath the cross and watch until the inevitable moments of death. This whole process of dying probably took about six or seven hours. It varies from person to person. Some might take even longer. They said that one normally dies from the loss of blood, thirst, and, or simply suffocation with the collapse of the lungs. Each breath that, that he took became harder and harder as he had to pull his own body weight up in order to grasp for a breath of air. It was indeed a slow, gruesome, and torturous way to die. Nevertheless, Jesus knew all of this was supposed to happen according to his father's plan. After all, his death was not only inevitable, but was necessary in order to fulfill his earth sent mission. The mission was now coming near its end, yet there was still some works left to be done. The moment would soon arrive for the Son of Man to be glorified. Even in, even in his final hours, Jesus continued to extend his mercy upon the people by forgiving those who put him there on the cross, as well as those who were being crucified alongside with him. Jesus turned this death penalty device, the cross, from a symbol of death and hate into a symbol of God's ultimate mercy, grace, love, and hope for humanity. The cross has become a sign of God's greatest glory and triumph while overcoming the sins of humanity. In the first two words that Jesus spoke as we as recorded in our mass in our Luke chapter, they capture a series of dialogues exchanged between Jesus and the two criminals. We do not know the names of these two criminals, neither do we know what offense or crimes they had committed. We only knew, however, as one of the men, as one of them mentioned to the other saying that we are condemned justly and are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But that was not the case for the dying Christ. What we saw was an act of injustice upon an innocent man who did no wrong of his own. Yet he was falsely accused, mocked, ridiculed, savagely beaten, assaulted, and sentenced unjustly to death for a crime that he did not commit. He was just being who he was, arriving to this world where many felt that he did not belong. They rejected him. Perhaps the people didn't like the way he looked or what he had to say, but he simply was speaking the truth. Yet somehow Jesus forgave his accusers, those who refused to believe in him, those who rejected him and betrayed him. What about us? Are we like the two criminals by Jesus' side, getting what we deserve for our sinful deeds committed? Were we like the one on the left who remained defiant and mocked Jesus of his mission and identity? Or were we like the one on the right who came to his senses and was remorseful at the end, 
in seeking God's mercy and forgiveness. What would Jesus do and say when he sees acts of injustice happening all around us today? To see how we mistreat one another by hearing derogatory insults, racial slurs, vicious and violent attacks upon, one, upon another innocent fellow human being, or even the sins of apathy, of doing nothing, looking the other way, or closing the door when someone in need was dying and laying down on, a, on the sidewalk, helpless, savagely beaten on the ground in deep pain and suffering. How would Jesus respond when we see injustice, when we see injustice happening right before our eyes upon innocent person? who were marginalized, voiceless, and powerless, and we did nothing. Lord, have mercy on us. Hear our prayers. The truth is, Jesus has seen and heard all of our cries and is grieving alongside, alongside with us today. He knew how, they, how that felt when he himself was a victim of such vicious injustice of this world. Yet he forgave his accusers, his victimizers, the one who turned against him by uttering his prayer, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This is exactly why Jesus was sent to this world in the first place, because of the sins of humanity until they were totally eradicated. We have allowed our own unconfessed sins to take roots in our lives and propagate it as they get passed from one person to another, from one group to another, from one generation to the next in a never ending cycle. We have failed to lift up to Christ's command of loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. We have treated others less than the image of God by claiming superiority and supremacy over the others. We have prejudged others for who they are and how they look based on their appearance on the outside. Lord, have mercy on us. Hear our prayers. Furthermore, even upon his final moment, Jesus continued to extend God's mercy and forgiveness upon the one who confessed his past sin. As he remorsefully petitioned to Jesus saying, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus heard his cry and granted him the assurance that truly I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. These simple exchanges between the two criminals and Jesus epitomize the work of salvation that Christ was sent to this world to carry out. We are in a dire situation that seems hopeless and lost, consequence of our human sins. We deserve our own condemnation. As the Apostle Paul confessed in his letter to the Romans in chapter 3, 23 to 25, he said, since all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, 
you have passed over the sins previously committed. Friends, we confess that we are not perfect individuals. We are nowhere near the standards that Christ has set before us. Nevertheless, God still loves us. God forgives us and embraces us in spite of our own shortcoming and our human sins. Each time we do that, we put another nail upon the cross of the crucified Christ. Christ unjustly died for the atonement of our human sins. Christ, the sacrificial lamb, paid the penalty of our sins with his own blood. No one else could do this except him and him alone. As Christ forgave those who put him on the cross, including all of us, we too ought to forgive those who sin against us. Even though that may seem, even though that may seem bitter and hurtful at times, through his ultimate sacrificial love as demonstrated upon the cross, Christ shall restore and rebuild this world of injustice and transform it into a paradise of forgiven sinners. As Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Today, you will be with me in paradise. May all glory and honor be to our God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.